Hi there. In this video, we're going to use Petra AI to auto forecast producing wells. Um, and then we'll take those wells and build a couple of different type curves to look at the performance for two different groups. My name is Kyle Amata, and I'm joined in this video by my colleague, Richard Gott. Hey, Kyle. Uh, really looking forward to seeing what Petro AI can do here. Uh, I thought it would be interesting to have a look at a recent transaction that closed. Uh, so thinking about the Noble and Chevron uh, combination, uh, we thought it would be neat to have a look at uh, the wells in Reeves County. Um, it turns out that both Noble and Chevron are both active in this area. Uh, so I thought it might be neat to see post-merger uh, what sort of best practices might be learned uh, and shared between the two groups uh, and see what the type curves look like before and after and then make some projections about what the new Chevron development strategy might be. Great. Okay. That sounds uh, like a perfect use case. And what we'll end up with is a dashboard that looks just like this where we've got the two groups, these two different companies, uh, we've got a map showing where the wells are located, and then a few different charts to help us dig into the details of the forecast that were generated. So this is what we're going to end up with. But to get started, I thought we can bring those groups into a new forecast scenario, create the auto forecast, look at the decline curves, and then uh, make some type curves. Great. Let's get going. All right. So I've got a Petron that I've created that we can put these well groups in and do the forecasting, and I've labeled that forecast scenario demo. So a Petron, you can think of a Petron as a digital workspace that contains the apps and the data that you're going to use for some type of analysis. And so this analysis, we're going to be using type curves, we're going to create forecasts, and we're going to look at the well groups. So I'm just going to go ahead and pin these different apps so we can quickly jump in. And I've preloaded this Petron with these two groups that we mentioned. Uh, we've got about 60 wells in Reeves County that Chevron operates, and then about 200 wells that Noble operates in the same area. So we can start with one of these scenarios. Uh, we can select the well group, and then we can launch an action to create the forecast scenario. And the scenario, I'll label it as Chevron plus Noble Reeves. So that brings the well group into our forecast scenario. And the forecast scenario is going to be where the auto forecast or the decline curves are generated using the settings that we specified. So we can see that this is going to be using a modified ARPS equation, and we can specify the upper and lower limits for all of those inputs, such as the B factor, the decline rate, the terminal decline rate, and so on for each one of these fluid streams. So Petro AI is going to generate a forecast for each individual well that conforms with those uh, constraints that you just put in. That's right. And when I hit build, we can see that it's going to add 213 models, one for each of those wells. So this kicks off a job uh, to auto forecast each one of those wells. And the job is actually running on the Petro AI server. And as the results are coming back, we can see this dashboard update in real time. So we're starting to get some of the results back. We can, uh, we can see the probits for the different EURs or early production. We've got a cross plot where we can look at a couple of different values. And then we've got progress in the top right that's going to show us uh, how far along this job is. So we're about 20% in at this point, and with 200 wells, this might take a minute or two to run. All right, Richard, looks like our forecast scenario is wrapping up. Yeah, so it looks like this is just the noble wells so far. Are we going to be able to uh, bring in the, the Chevron wells as well? Yep, great point. So we launched that action from the groups app, and we, we had that noble wells group selected. Um, to add in our Chevron wells, we can hit the add button, and then I can search for Chevron. That's going to bring up all of the groups that have the word Chevron in the title, and I can grab these Chevron wells for Reeves County. And now we brought in uh, a second group, and when I click build again, it's telling me that we have 213 existing well models. Those are the Noble wells, but it's going to add in these 60 wells from the Chevron group and then apply the auto forecast to each one of those wells. Perfect. All right, looks like the Chevron wells have finished forecasting. And if we wanted to, to jump in and look at those wells individually, we can use the filters. I can search for my operator field, 
click the drop down, and we see both of these operators, Chevron and Noble. And I can add Chevron to the filter, and that's going to show me those 60 Chevron wells that we just forecast. Uh, and I can select on any of these charts and see where those wells are located on the, the other charts, uh, which is really nice because if I close my filter panel or if I reset the filters, that selection is going to persist so we can see exactly where these Chevron wells are with respect to the Noble ones. Oh, this is great. Okay, so the, the darker wells here uh, are, the, are the Chevron wells. And so if I was a Chevron stakeholder, I'd be, you know, excited because uh, it looks like some of the higher performing wells here are, are coming from that Noble uh, asset. That's right. So we're, we're plotting EUR, the cumulative probability of oil EUR. And it looks like the Chevron wells fall between around the P10 and P50 with a handful of wells, maybe in this P75 range. And what about lateral length? Can we have a, a look at what's going on there? Sure. Uh, I think the cross plot is the best place to do that. We can look at the oil EUR versus the lateral length. It looks like there's a few different groups, uh, a few wells that don't have lateral lengths reported. There's a group around five to 6,000 feet, uh, closer to 7,500 feet, and then a group around 10,000 feet. No, oh, that's great. Yeah, so when we make our type curves, we've got a couple of options. We could group the wells based on their lateral length and make individual type curves for each one of those, or we could grab the whole set and then normalize by that lateral. No, cool. Uh, excited to see how that works. All right, well, let's, uh, let's start with the Chevron wells. To make a type curve, we can just select this group, which is going to launch an action on that group. And from here, we can just simply create a type curve, which I'll call Chevron wells TC. That's going to launch us into a new app. It's going to take us to that, the type curve app and then automatically build the type curve using the default settings and the, the DCA parameters. So very quickly, we can see the different fluid streams, oil, gas, and water. And it's actually building up four type curves, one for each of these percentiles, P10, P50, P90, and average. We'll save this tab. We can duplicate it and come back to it in a second. And then I can just hit the back button on my browser to go back to that forecast scenario. Okay, so we just created that Chevron type curve. Now we'll click over to Noble, do the same exercise for those Noble wells. Yep, so we'll just click on Noble, create type curve, give it a name, and that's going to launch us into the Noble wells type curve. And again, Kyle, green is oil, red is gas, blue is water, correct? That's right. And these charts are interactive, so if I wanted to zoom in, I can use my box zoom tool. We can focus on the area where the forecast overlays the actual production. And these, again, uh, this is the P90, uh, the average P50 and P10 type curve. Yep, that's right. And so let's say we don't need all of these. I can actually remove some of these models. So by clicking the X, we're going to delete those models. So I can get rid of the P10, the P50, and let's say we just want to keep the average of P90 for each one of these. And we can do the same thing for our Chevron type curve. Uh, we'll just keep the P90 and the average. I noticed here, because there's fewer wells, Kyle, it looks like uh, we've got kind of a spaghetti plot happening in the background. Yeah, so if we zoom in on that, what this is showing us is the individual production streams for all of the wells inside this type curve. And there's a note over here that's telling us that when there's 100 wells or less, we'll see those lines. But when you get more than that, it starts to make that plot pretty messy, so we just hide those lines. Got it. All right, so we've got our two type curves. Um, let's assume that we like these fits. We could make adjustments to them. We could actually jump into each one of these and edit the decline curve model that was fit to it. But we'll save that for another video. So I'm going to go back into our forecast scenario and then bring in these type curves. And we can do that by using the Add button again. And we can do that by searching for our type curve by name. I've got Chevron Wells TC. And we've got the Noble Wells TC. So we've added two new groups for each one of those type curves. And when I hit Build, uh, it's telling us that we've got 273 existing models, but we're adding two new type curves. And those type curves will be helpful when we're looking at the single well forecast. We can have the context of the type curves for comparison. I see. So on a single well, you could see if it's a, a Chevron average or in line with a Noble average or, or underperforming or outperforming uh, for its sort of type curve group. That's right. So when we launch into the decline curve model, that's going to take us to a page that has 
the production history for the well, the forecast that was generated, and then all of the ARPS parameters that were calculated. And because we added those type curves to our scenario, we now have that in the background as these dotted lines. That's fantastic. So if I just put my cursor over this, we get a tooltip that shows us this top curve is the Noble Wells P90. The second one is the Chevron Wells P90, followed by the, the Noble Wells average and the Chevron Wells average. And again, we can interact with these charts. We can zoom in. Uh, I can pan around. And there's some neat updating options. We could change the ARPS parameters if we wanted to, say, adjust the B factor. That would adjust this dotted line, which is showing the forecast. I can also use this tap tool and actually just drop points on the chart. And it will fit a curve through those points that I've dropped on the chart. And so uh, does that stay consistent with the, with the ARPS equation, Kyle, or does it just fit uh, a curve between those lines? Nope, it still honors the, the mathematics of that ARPS decline equation. It's just fitting it through these points that you put on the plot. Great. All right, well, let's jump back to our forecast scenario where we can see a summary of these two different well groups, one for each operator, and then their associated type curves. Well, that was a, that was a really great introduction, Kyle. So what do you think we should do next in this workflow? I think the next step would be to perform an economic analysis. Uh, we could use the PDP forecasts for these two well groups, and we could get an, a sense of the value of the wells that are producing. But we could also bring in those two different type curves and forecast a, a development schedule, apply the type curves, and apply some economics to those development wells to get a sense of what the performance might look like in the future. Uh, well, that sounds pretty powerful. Why don't we save that for the next video, and then we can dive in and do that uh, next week. Sounds good. Looking forward to it. Take care. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for watching, and tune in for the next videos.